let's just have a quick lesson on this piece by um, Kellner. Um, um, I put a video out of this a little while ago, but I just, I'm doing an update on it because I changed some of the fingerings and ideas in the piece. But um, it's a pretty straightforward piece for the most part, but there's a couple of little sections that are, are a, a, just a little bit tricky. So let's just talk about those. So it starts off pretty straightforward. There's some slurs, guide the three down. You know, it's a little bit worming around the, the fingerboard, but... But it's but still straightforward, right? So that part there, you can do it in lots of different ways. Um, the way I had it previously, this is bar seven. Uh, I had it. But I ended up changing it. to the F sharp being on the fifth string there. So let me just demonstrate that one more time. Now you can hear though with those open strings that you're gonna get some ringing out. So you might've noticed in the performance that I was muting them. I was going. So I'm muting that fourth string with my index finger using the sixth string with the back of my thumb and then playing the A. You don't have to do that. If you're more of an intermediate player, I wouldn't really worry about it. Just let it all ring out. It's not that big of a deal. But if you want to clean it up a little bit, then you'll have to mute out those strings. So I mute the open D with the index finger and then the E I mute with the back of the thumb. So I prepare my thumb on the fifth string, but then with the back of my thumb, I just kind of mute out that E. Like I said, if you're an intermediate player, don't worry about it. Um, the louder note will sustain more clearly anyway, so I don't think you have to think about it too much. Then it goes into the piece. This is just a nice, easy, but charming section. ornaments are my, um, my, um, it's just part of my addition. It's not necessarily part of the original, but you would have been expected to, to ornament quite a bit. And I didn't do the repeats on the, on the recording we just did. So, uh, you don't hear too much ornamentation anyway. Yeah. In the second part of the piece, um, that ornamentation again is, is a bit of my, addition to it. So if you don't feel like doing the cross string trill and the extra suspension, you would just go like this. Nice and simple. With the ornaments, the reason I do that is just to keep like quarter note beat activity happening and eighth note beat activity. Um, just to kind of fill in those empty gaps there. So I go and then a cross string trill from F to E. So I go, I use A, M, I, P. It might seem weird to use M and I on the, on the upper strings, but it's just like a tremolo pattern, right? A, M, I, P. And then I just play that D sharp on the beat and slur into the end of one with the fourth finger. Just to, again, to add some activity. Another charming section that isn't too difficult. You can do a little echo if you want. But then bring it back. back 
back into the, the Rondo theme. Um, the only other thing is some right hand fingering. Um, I'm a little loose on the right hand fingering. It could be tightened. It could be tightened up a little bit, but I'm using A and then M I and then A M I A M I and pretty much just like whenever I have to reach out to a bass note, I I, I sometimes end up using A, but. Um, any of the exchanges, I'm mainly just using I and M. So um, it's a pretty straightforward piece, but because of those little sections, I would put it more on the upper level intermediate um, side. So like early advanced or late intermediate, just because of those few little sections. Um, but otherwise the piece is very medium difficulty, which is really great. Um, I really love this era of music, this kind of Gallant style um, mm. Baroque material and of, of just kind of medium difficulty. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and you can get the sheet music from this classical guitar.